<laughs> lovely guest today, man. A good friend of mine, Mark John Brown. I've never seen anybody look so cool in a pair of fucking yellow jeans, man. <laughs> John Brown is MGB, so hear me say MGB that is just a abbreviation of his name. So I met Mark John Brown through a coach training company where I was a mentor coach. Uh, Mark uh, done the, the course, and from there he just went on. What is that, a shamanic practitioner now? Shamanic practitioner, yeah. plant medicine integration coach. So that's where I took my coaching to plant medicine, right? And uh, I like to add a part that's that feels most important to me, which is indigenous educator as well. Mm. So I educate on indigenous ways. Brilliant, man. So what, like their ways of life? Yeah, exactly. Their ways of seeing it. their relationship to the world, their cosmo their their cosmologies, their uh, worldviews, uh, just to give it to the world in a way that's you know. Well, here's the guy that's you know pair of yellow jeans on and blue socks and coming through through the world. <laughs> Uh, in a way, in a way that's that's digestible, relatable, and, and, and cool, you know, like um, yeah, to bring to bring coolness back to plants again because they hold the secrets of what it means to be human, uh, literally. Uh, so yeah, that's. Uh, so do you want to expand on that? We'll just we'll just we'll just dive right in there then. Cool. So yeah, there is there is a there is a master a master shaman from Colombia. I think his name yes. Uh, in Colombia, the shamans, the master shamans are called Taitas, which is actually a Quechua word. Uh, it's of Quechua origin, which means father. So father Taita, uh, Keita, his wisdom, he says, um, deep within the DNA of plants is the, the secret of what it means to be human. Right, I'm gonna take this hat off, guys, because I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little toasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and literally man you know the plants that are used every single every single original culture in the world including our own culture right well, everybody's scottish here right um druids celtic <coughs> nordics we probably got quite a high percentage of nordic blood in, in us you know for the for the vikings all these cultures these cultures and every single culture across the whole world the original indigenous culture has had plants it's natural, we're just a, an extension of the natural world, right? right but we've had, we've had what is called, uh, what is known as teacher plants or master plants, like the masters, the, the teachers, um, that teach us how to be. And the most famous one that is bursting its way through the world right now, can any of you know? Ayahuasca. Right, okay, everybody knows Ayahuasca. <laughs> but, so many people like they don't realize that actually their own culture has their own version of of such a thing in in druid celtic shamanism uh, and, and nordic as well in fact idrasil you ever heard of idrasil the big tree that looks like the tree of life from the nordic culture man yeah. that that has a, a part of it that has hallucinogenic properties just just like ayahuasca not not to the same level or in the same texture as ayahuasca, but you know, it, it has those those qualities, and we would ceremonialize it and you know commune with me. It's like it's like in, in Avatar plugging into Ingwa. That's all we're doing when we when we when we consume these plants. And another one big in this country, uh, golden teacher mushrooms. Golden teachers. Everybody thinks, oh, fucking magic mushrooms. Let's get go nuts and get high and. <laughs> Yeah, okay, those those are those are old old days for us, right? But mm -hmm. when we can actually go a bit deeper with it, those mushrooms have so much to teach us, so much about ourselves, about the land upon we walk, about history, right? The secret history that only the fucking plants know because us daft humans have written it all in books, but the plant right in here, <laughs> right in here is history. Mm -hmm. okay. Carried for it. What is DNA? It's information. Right. And it goes right back to the beginning of time, right? So, um, but of course, the big one is, is ayahuasca, and um, yeah, I mean, I I personally work you know, really really closely with ayahuasca. I'm in the middle of building a really strong relationship with ayahuasca, you know, through because I've chosen, and, I have, and this is this is the this is the 
massively interesting thing is that the deeper that I've gone with the Shipibo culture from the Amazon jungle, right? mm -hmm. from the Amazon jungle of Peru. Because you were just in Peru, Mark. Right? You came back just before COVID. Tried to emigrate, didn't I? Aye, so, aye. Um, yeah, the deeper that I go with them, the more I wake up to my own roots. That's the magical thing about it. So the deeper I'm going with them, the more I'm waking up to my own Celtic, Nordic, Druidic roots, um, which you guys have got as well. You can see a wee twingy, a slight twingy strawberry. Yeah, yeah my, my son's more than me. He's got a good bit of orange, right. and I've got orange in the beard and that as well. Right, okay. Yeah. You know what's funny you say that? Because I, I like, uh, uh, not that long ago, uh, spoke like we'd seen a shamanic healer. Mm. And the things that came up was that I had like a, a Viking heritage. I had mm -hmm. Viking heritage, like, and it, she says it came through like really powerfully. Yeah, that was wow. like some like leader of some Viking thing or, and something like that. And I had like in a past life, I, I had to go out to sea, but part of me wanted to stay at home, but I, I was obligated to go out to like sea and, and, and fight, and then I died. And, and she was saying all this, and I was like, Jesus, wow. God. Died of him. Aye, aye, like, it was it just, it was amazing. There is a man called Brian Weiss. Um, he is, essentially, he's the pioneer of past life regression in the modern world, right? He's the, right. the guy that brought it to the modern world, right? And, um, I'm studying this tonight, past life regression. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? Are I'm you trying really? to, I, I've just got, um, I read Dolores Cannon. Um, okay. But Brian Weiss, I just literally got put on to some to Brian Weiss. Is it Weiss? But Weiss, Brian? Weiss, 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 Weiss. Yeah, yeah, I just literally got put on to him the other day. It's so funny. He's many lives, many masters. Well, I, I'm not. That's yeah. just that name. It's just came up twice. Uh, I was wondering why you were why you were looking at me with a smile. Like this, yeah, is this, this is meant to be. Then. This was meant to be. The past life progression has definitely been something in that. Mm. The interview, the, the, Absolutely. The subconscious mind and the speaking straight to. His, source energy and stuff and Absolutely. there's something in that man. Yeah. So how can that stuff so, still affect you much on but like the MGB in this in like the present day then? Can that like from a past life, how can it still affect you? If because it does eh? Yeah, absolutely man. Aye. Absolutely. I mean, first of all what I was gonna say to you is he teaches that like 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 killer whales or like whales, like dolphins, souls travel in pods through time. Right. Mm. So it's very likely that we are a pod of souls, right? Very likely. That in fact, I'm a, I'm almost convinced of that, right? I'm almost convinced of that. Right? Everybody that you come across in life, you're supposed to come across, and it's because they're part of your pod of souls, basically. Right. right. So now, what I was going to say to to you on the whole Viking thing is, uh, I've done past life regression on myself. Like, just I'm sure you know how it was done with the drum and mm. that wasn't right. right. Um, in a shamanic sense, and I was a Viking as well. So, oh, really? Uh, and I died crossing the North Sea somewhere. Oh, my God. So, Bloody hell, man. Yeah, so, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we shared that life together, but yeah. But that's yeah. the funny thing, you know, like, um, and of course, like, science, or the science that we know, you know, the science of tomorrow will probably accept this openly. But the science of today finds it difficult to digest this stuff, right? But, but to answer your question, man, like, yeah, we just like just like when we get beaten as a child, for example, right. Right, that causes a lot of trauma. That causes a lot of uh, real uh, distortion in the nervous system, and and you know, we, right. can, we can find ourselves always on the defensive, or like if somebody makes a loud noise near us. That, you know, we get afraid. That's that's trauma acting out in our everyday life, right? But and that's in the memory of our body. That's primarily in the me memory of our body, right? But past life stuff, if it's not resolved through the karmic cycles, affects us in the exact same way, right? So there are people who have tried every method under the sun to, you know, lose weight and not be obese and they haven't managed, right? Until they found past life regression, which I'm sure you're going to be studying sometime. I hope so. I can lose some weight. <laughs> 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 oh, tell, tell, tell me about <laughs> COVID time, <laughs> COVID time. <laughs> um, yeah, so, 
and and they do they do like a past life regression and learn that for example they've died of hunger in, in a past life and so that's why in this life they are really obese and then the minute that they do past life past life therapy to go back into that life and heal them man they, they lose weight <laughs> mentally yeah. and it just like so that initial thing that comes to me there is just that then so it just shows you like that, that your physical body is just a front there eh? it's just like it, it's just like your flesh and that is just like a some sort suit. of eye meat suit eye for your soul to progress or learn lessons or whatever it is and it's like it's fascinating mm -hmm. right so we'll come back to this right cool. definitely but Mark, i think so how how did you get into all this then well like what like because what, like, i know when you were younger you went away traveling and so what, what how did you get into all this what like where, where did you start off was it like when you're a teenager 20s or um, 19 19 years old yeah um Age 11, really? at age 11, I was in my back garden kicking a football against a wall, as you do age 11. And this little tan guy comes up to me, right? He doesn't speak much English, but he comes and he's like, play, play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's play, you know, we started playing. Man, six months later, that guy who was from Argentina, he became my best mate. Six months later, he was speaking completely fluent English with my accent, just like a Scotsman. Um, we became best pals. I then called this, I mean, call this, you know, if you don't, if this isn't destiny, tell me what is, right? Age 14, 14, I met in my registration class at high school, a guy from Paraguay. So I took this Paraguay from school to my home neighborhood to introduce him to this guy from Argentina after finding out that Paraguay and Argentina shared a border and spoke the same language. And I put those two together and we and I and we became a trio of best friends growing up together. And I couldn't take it that I couldn't speak the language. So by the age of um by the way, yeah, by the age of fifteen. I was speaking completely fluent Spanish, right? Oh really? Yeah. And yeah, by the age of fifteen. You knew, you knew that about me, yeah? No, 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 no. Oh, I never knew that. Really? Never knew that. Never there knew we that. go. Because in more yeah. recent times, right, I've practiced for six years as an interpreter and translator, right? From, <coughs> from 2012 until 2018, right? Um, right up to like December 2018, I practiced as a. I actually did a couple of translations this year, just for, you know, bits and bobs to do. Um, but. That sparked that, that that sparked my interest in South America, and I wanted to go to South America and just like really get in amongst it. Right. Went to. It's alright. Give me the key. Continue talking. No, continue right. continue no, talking. I'm just gonna, all right. Continue I'm talking. Just talking. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's just. Um, sorry. Sorry, calm down. <laughs> I'm from here. All these kids What's going on in there? <laughs> Come in, man. Join, join, uh, join. Yeah, no, we're just doing podcasts. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Are you okay if I give you on Sunday? Aye. I've got no cash. Or give me your back details. Are you doing that? Yeah, aye, 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 aye. stop it. Thinking in that, Bob, you're like. Are you down? Yeah. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. It's good to have a face to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, we'll get on home before Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. What, what are you doing? Your podcast? Yes. What are you chatting about today? Oh, deep, <laughs> deep stuff, man. Deep stuff, man. Are you talking about why you don't wear shoes? Just anymore? think feet, plants, medicines, uh, earth, earth. Far, far corners of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've moved them? Aye, because obviously we're going to bring them back in. Oh, God, good luck. Oh, we're going to bring them back in. That's the same in my life. I'm going to choose this. I'll see you later. Right. Have a happy day. Cheers. 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 Beautiful lady. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so do we do we keep going? Yeah, yeah. Aye. Let's go Aye, Aye, let's go it, man. <clears throat> Aye. So went to uni, age 18, 17. Yeah. Age 17. Uh, still in that. Aye. Um started to study actually hold on, it was age 18. I was age 18. 
Subject to study Spanish and Latin American studies, right? I would have spoke it completely fluent and everything. Yeah, completely. But I just wanted to put a title to it. But it only lasted for four months because when I was sitting in the corner of a classroom in Stirling, reading books, poetry, and reading about the culture, when I had this itch to just go and get in amongst it, be like, why am I studying this from Scotland when I can be over there? <laughs> right? So, so immersion, man. Mm, immersion. Mm, mm, mm. So, uh, 19, age 19, just turned 19, July 2008, I landed for the first time in Buenos Aires, Argentina. On your end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The plan was to live there for six months and um, just experience things and, and then come back, right? Um, after four months, I did two things. I blew all the cash that I had. <laughs> On what? <laughs> massive spiritual awakening mm. with Brian Weiss at the centre of it all, right? He was right. like literally at the centre of it. Um, and at that point I just decided that I didn't want to go home two months later and I cancelled my flight home. And I ended up staying in South America for the best part of two years. Oh, Jesus, man. Mm. And, and, and even though I didn't have cash, when my visa ran out after six months, I just took to the road and I hitchhiked. I hitchhiked all the way from Argentina through Chile through Bolivia, through the mountains of Bolivia, into Peru. Whoa, <laughs> man! Yeah, because yeah. you spoke oh, Spanish. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. honestly, what? I, I just think balls, man. Oh, I just think balls, balls, man. And so you're saying, how did this all start? First, the spiritual awakening in Buenos Aires, but the whole indigenous part, man. When I was hitchhiking through the mountains of Bolivia, Argentina and Chile, they're fairly modern, right? Mm. And hitchhiking is actually like kind of accepted and normal. Well, not, maybe not normal, but like it's accepted and it's people are all okay with it. Right. In Bolivia, the poorest people of the country are so poor that they can't afford public transport. So they're like um, commercial vehicles, construction vehicles. Right. When they're out of work or between between work, in fact, it's it, it has become a source of income for them. They subsidize travel fees for the country's peasants, right? And so you'll find, I mean, I've got a photo on this. I could show you a photo on my phone. <laughs> and if, I don't know if you're going to have show notes or whatever, but I can send you. I've got a photo of, of the back of a truck in, in, like, traveling through the mountains of Bolivia. Literally. Like, not in this photo. You, what you see in this photo is a whole bunch of Bolivians all squashed in the back of a fucking truck like that. But <laughs> it's not uncommon to see literally uh, tractor tires, fucking cages with them. Um, it's okay to say fuck, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, like cages of chickens, <clears throat> chests of drawers, wardrobes, the whole shebang. And so I, I'm like, I, I was traveling through Bolivia with these people, right? And they didn't speak Spanish. They were speaking Quechua, which is the indigenous language, which came before the Spanish conquest, uh, right? The indigenous people. Like Bolivia is probably 95 to 98 percent indigenous right and quechua and Aymara speakers right so and and this it just it just fascinated me i was literally rubbing fucking shoulders with, with with these people you know literally like in the pocket with them breathing the same air as them right up and close you know that's where the whole indigenous thing sparked and by the time i got to lake titicaca which is the highest lake in the world which divides well it it, it crossed half of the lake belongs to Bolivia, half belongs to Peru, right? On the Bolivian side, um, I did my first San Pedro ceremony, right? Which is, um, you, you drink it as well, like ayahuasca, but it's a cactus and you make it into a juice. So I, I cooked it on a campfire there and I, I took it on the edge of Lake Titicaca. And that was my first experience. That was my first plant medicine experience. I mean, I had a silly experience with salvia Salvia Dijonorum, which is from the desert of Mexico, I had a really silly experience with that when I was a bit... Actually, when I was at uni, so I was, it was only about a year earlier, 18. And it was just a silly, after a drunken day out, like, and yeah, I, I paid the price for it. Right? But, <laughs> but, but, like, with intention, with spiritual intention to, you know, go deep inside myself and grow and learn and communicate with the plants and whatever, my first ever ceremony was on the edge of Lake Titicaca in Copacabana, Bolivia, in February 2009. Yeah, um, can I yeah. ask what? So, 
what was the spiritual awakening? I can organise you a session with that very person if you want, <clears throat> but it would have to have me in the middle of it interpreting because she doesn't speak English. No, but I mean the ones when you were in Buenos Aires. I want to say this. This is this is how. So she's a. Oh, amazing. She's a. She's basically like a. a a white witch, like she's a clear white, so she looks at you, and as soon as she looks at you, she just gets all these downloads from from the universe about you, all your like six past lives. She'll tell you if you've got a Viking background as well, uh, your future as well. I mean, she predicted the marriage, my marriage to my wife. Right? She was like, "This is what she said," and it's funny, man. Now I think back, by the way. Sorry, so I just want like, to bring this round if we can get you in more. Oh, cool. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to hide it. <laughs> um, it's mad because when I was living in Buenos Aires, right, I was, I was, I was out there like doing volunteer work in the in the poor areas of the of the city. city Buenos Aires is bigger than Italy, by the way. Like it's a ma it's a city, but it's bigger than Italy. So. Just to give you an idea, I was out in the in the pockets, you know, the, like the poorest pockets of Buenos Aires, just doing volunteer work. And in the middle of doing that, I was coming face to face with this race of 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 women that I'd never really come into contact with before, and I found them ridiculously attractive. <laughs> like, and, I, and I didn't realize that these women, they're 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 actually indigenous, right? They're, they're, the indigenous race of those lands. I didn't realise it at the time, but then this this white witch, this fair voice, she was like, she said, I can see that you're going to get married really young, maybe, and she, because she can't actually see ages in specific, she just right. sees like, she just sees a notion of time, if you know what I mean. Right. Like, like she doesn't see specific, so she was like, she was like, maybe 21, 22, you're going to get married. And uh, the person that you're going to get married to, she's very indigenous, because I see that you, you love the indigenous race of, of women. Uh, <clears throat> lo and behold, man, like literally. <sighs> six months later, I met my wife. Well, the woman who would then, three months after that, become my wife in, in Peru, right? And I'm still with her today, 11 years later, right? Wow. She's pregnant with our second child. And congratulations. Hi, Roman. Wow. So incredible. And you know you know it? Right. Yeah, so is that yes, your no, good, well said. Yeah. Is that your spiritual awakening there? Like is that like With her, with that woman. With that woman because then she was like, you know, in order to because I mean she, Jesus man. What like what was the hardest hitting part of that exchange with her? It was the fact that she could see my childhood promise. I had, I had fucking, I'd known her for 15 minutes, right? And she could see all my traumas. And she was counselling me on them. And she was like, see how you feel about that person because they did that. Like, I was just like, and I, well, I, 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 I burst into tears in front of her name. Because um, she was just pushing all these little buttons. Like, she, she just could see me, she, see me naked, basically. She had me naked in front of her, you know? My soul, naked. <laughs> need defenses um, really you're just like yeah man. yeah well I, I didn't really need one at that time anyway you know that's what i needed and, and that was the hardest hitting part and then to help me digest it and like get used to it and learn she was like here read this book by and wise many many young masters and i'm going off the kids yeah. <laughs> and i just wolfed it down in, in like four days bam 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 chow. And then I went to the bookshops and what I said is, yes, what I spent my money on, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> Apart from all the fun things, I, I bought a pile of books like that, you know, and I'm just, oh, man, I'm just munching them in, in my little, you know, my little apartment in Buenos Aires. And that was my, my, my spiritual awakening right now. I, like, I, I went to a past life therapist, did some did some past life stuff, right? But I never really got like strong visuals. I just got like this sense of these beings, like an angelic beings. And then this name came to me, right? This name, Sumapetu Grani, and I can remember it. I can remember it even today, right? Uh, my ex-business partner from, who's from Iceland, she always corrects my pronunciation because I, I automatically, when I'm saying stuff that's not in English, I, I, my default accent is Spanish, right? Granny. She's, she says, no, it's granny, granny. 
So Suma Petyo Grani, right? It just popped up in my mind. I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. Started to research that name. First of all, the the, the past life uh, therapist, he said, it's really interesting the behavior of these beings when they came to you because they were excited, like the, the energy of them was like, like a biking party, beer flying everywhere, like, ah, I'm really, I'm really <laughs> celebrating with my arrival, right? And then um, I, he said, like, you know, um, I am surprised by their reaction, by their way they, uh, you know, received you, because it was like they were receiving you for the first time in a long time, you know? Okay, cool. So my picture, what does I mean, this mean? I don't really know. I started to research it. Couldn't find anything for Summa Pichu. Eleven years later, I still got the name locked in there. Don't know what Summa Pichu is, but Granny. Granny is, is part of Norse mythology. And it's a horse. It's a big, powerful horse in, in Norse mythology. Upon which Seeger, who was one of the biggest, baddest motherfuckers in, <laughs> in, in Viking culture, right? <laughs> It, it, Granny was the horse on, on on the back of the back of whom Sigurd used to ride into battle, and he I mean he was a, a big part in Norse mythology. I, I don't know much more than that, um, but then you know, but then later the dogs just started to join with the whole Viking thing as well. I was like, oh okay, I did my own past life regression. And, um, so yeah, man, that, that was that was that was my spiritual awakening, and my you know the, the indigenous thing came when I was traveling in the trucks through Bolivia, and then when I got into Peru, of course, man, I met my wife in Cusco. Which we lived in Cusco for like six months. That's the cradle of the Incas. That's, that's the. It's like a it's like a town on in, in, the, in the middle of the mountains. Aye, the middle of the mountains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aye. yeah. And that's that's, that's the the home of the Cusco. Cusco. That's how they pronounce it. That's the the home of the Incas. Just, you know, it's like a, a hub for getting to Machu Picchu, right? So, in yeah. there, man, in there, I was, you know, discovering all sorts, man. Um, the Salmerio, you know, all the plants, all the all the shamanic practices, and I, and I, I was just going to the markets, like, just really curious, going to the markets and, and saying, what's this? What's that? What does this do? Oh, oh yeah, the shamans use this to clean your energy field, and, and they use this to blow over your body so they can see your energy field and see where you need help and all of this stuff and you know this was that was when the whole indigenous shamanic thing began in 2009 when I got to Cusco um, and then of course when I came here 2000 and oof, I don't know what it was 2010 yeah 2010 I started my shamanic path with the Edinburgh Shamanic Centre Claudio Monsalves and Mark Halliday she's Brazilian he's Scottish now we've kind of been in and out of apprenticeship with them for you know ten years, and Claudia's now the godmother of my daughter. <laughs> wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but because have they not got practices in Belerno and like one a wee Port shop in Portobello mm -hmm. as well? Right? Yeah. yeah, they live in Belerno. Right? Aye. Um, and then obviously in in December two thousand nineteen, that's when I made the decision. Finally, after having been working with plant medicine since 2009, I made the decision finally to just take it that step deeper with the Shapiro tribe down in the Amazon jungle. So it's since December 2019, because I've been doing that, I've been drinking ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, <coughs> I've been drinking since 2011. Probably done in, in advance of 77 years. Really? More, maybe more, I don't know, I've lost count. So we've talked about this before, MJB, about the, like, I, I, like I have no, I don't know a lot about it, but so ayahuasca can be like almost like a gateway to like what your soul, you like it like like I don't know hurt trauma like mm. to really get into like your deepest darkest. Mm. I don't know what your shadow would you would you say your shadow? I, I, I don't know like what like for people that mm. don't know what that like what this would be. What what is it exactly? So it's a psychotropic, meaning changes, changes the patterns of your brain, psychotropic, right? Psychotropic uh, plant medicine, which is drunk in liquid form, tastes vile, <laughs> really tastes vile. Um, but it's a mixture of a vine <coughs> and a leaf. 
cooked over about three days with lots of prayer and lots of intention and lots of blessings and you know really piled into it and, and then you drink it in, in a ceremonial environment and you learn a lot you learn about yourself you learn why you feel like this why you behave like that what you need to do to make yourself feel better what you need to do to live in more harmony with nature <coughs> what the world needs mm. to live in more harmony in general and um, the nature of plants the symbiotic nature of us with everything that surrounds us and um, there is no one I, I couldn't give you one prescribed thing that happens, thing that, that, that happens to you and um, I mean you know, there's a, there's a LinkedIn influencer, she's massive, she's got about 600,000 followers on LinkedIn, wow. And she at Robotham, she in the past two years discovered ayahuasca and plant medicines and the things that she had. I mean, she just lets it all loose on her um, podcast, which is called the She at Robotham Show. I really recommend it to you, Robotham. Oh, yeah. Because the things, like, just the, the depth of stuff that she overturned and the truly I mean, it's gruesome what what her childhood contained, right? Aye. Fucking gruesome and horrific, like absolutely fucking horrific. But uh, because the brain's automatic response on many occasions and in many cases to such heavy trauma is to just black it out. Aye. She was unaware, but she would see she could feel these patterns inside herself of like self-sabotage and, and like damaging relationship dynamics and, 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 and the biggest one of them all was a ridiculously unhealthy relationship to sex eh? and that, that's her biggest thing of it all and, and I'm cool talking about this because she's got it on her podcast and she's just like free, mm. open, free with it right and yeah the things that that overturned for her man. And Ayahuasca helped her explore that deeper and where it all it came brought it from. to our awareness, Aye. first and foremost. Even such subtleties, such as why she's got such a weak bladder and needs to go to the toilet really often. Right? Um, God. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take that. Each experience is completely different to whatever life you've lived. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, did, I did a couple of ceremonies <coughs> recently, right? And in all my eleven years, in all of the ceremonies I've done, I've never experienced what I experienced back then, just a couple of weekends ago. Really? I never, never. It was just a total cathartic release for me. You know, I, I mean, normally, right? Because I have a really good connection with the plant, right? And this is this is for anybody that works with me. This is my core teaching, right? Is you're connecting with a plant. You're connecting with the spirit of a plant. That spirit, that plant spirit, knows and understands you, knows and understands the world. Right? Mm. That's my core teaching for everybody. I've got a good connection with the plant, right? So normally, normally I just, just a wee 30 ml cup, whatever. I can go a whole night with that, right? But this night, I must have had about in total, well, let's say three 60 mil doses, or 50 to 60 mil doses, three in one night. So I had like 150 mil or, or, or more, or like you said, 180 mils Fuck. in one night, right? In one night. I wonder what made you take that much. Her. Um, her. It was her. But here's the thing took the first cup, no problem. Like I'm learning my lesson, and it was all about relationships and friendships and and then when it was time for my second cup I couldn't fucking deal with it couldn't really? deal with it like, I felt like I was trying to climb a cliff naked you know like couldn't deal with it I took the cup my hand was shaking just to oh god <laughs> 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 got it in right and Literally, before it's even hit the back of my throat, I'm gagging. <coughs> oh, really? And, and that just turned the tap on of this massive, 
fucking massive cathartic vomit I kind of <laughs> An hour later, same again, third cup. Right? <laughs> Trying to get it out, same again. <laughs> Just a fucking massive vomit I can't make. Absolutely massive. <clears throat> the I morning, getting chills through my back listening to this like the morning that, I mean there was a lot of suffering as well right because mm. sometimes sometimes I just vomit <clears> so, like, I, I'm cool with vomit after like, living years of doing plant medicine so I better be alright with vomit and like, <laughs> yeah, I'm totally cool with vomit but like and sometimes I can vomit and not really suffer that much and just like accept the release or whatever but this time there was a lot of whimpering and whining and I'm not, like, my, my mouth was shaking it was like really suffering it man, you know, like crying and just right. feeling the pain that I was releasing, right? I was fucking releasing a lot of pain. And then <laughs> getting ready to go into my second night, I'm like, holy fuck. What happened to me last night has never happened to me in all of my living years doing this. That was brutal last night. And she was blind. She was like, yep. Never have experienced this in a million years doing it, but you know what? It's good to see exactly what you need right now. And you know what? You're going to get exactly the same tonight. Inch by inch, detail by detail, moment by moment, second by second, you're getting exactly what you got last night. Because this is cleansing. You're releasing ancestral shit, you're releasing family shit, you're releasing, you know, it all. Oh, Deepest cleanse. And you know what? I went into the second night, inch by inch, first cup down. Lessons learned, relationships, friendships, ancestry, lineage, the whole shebang, family, of course, the baby coming, all, all, all this stuff was just like, I was just learning all these lessons and when to put my energy, how to manage my energy. And Does that just come to you in like your mind or you're, you feel it in your body, your soul? Or? She showed you, she showed you in visions, right? And, um, sometimes animal spirits will come, like for example, I had this, I had this, and, I, and, and in that moment, in this moment when I had this vision, I was thinking, I think, I think once the energies of my life settle, I'm going to start drawing my visions, because these are fucking out of the, out of this world, man, like, but I had this, I had this, uh, puffin head, with like an eagle's body, right, just coming, just being in that space, right, and the lesson that it was teaching me is like, You've got the head of a puffin right now, the puffin being monogamous, committed, family, uh, excellent parent, right? With the body of a fucking eagle. Like it's protective, knows where to hunt, what to hunt, when to hunt, what food to bring, right? Uh, takes no shit from anybody and fucking dominates the skirts, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what came through for me on, on, in that second journey. But then, again, Second cup, couldn't could, could have fucking deal with it, and, and, and again, boom, cathartic, massive vomit release, vomit, blah, fucking, just really cathartic, an hour later, third cup, again, blah. in the morning, before 11am, I've been to the toilet to have a shit six times, <laughs> six <laughs> times, no, not diarrhea, just like, Big shit. <laughs> six wow. times, man. Six times. So that weekend was a massive relief. I mean, <clears throat> I've come out of that. I've come out of that. Sorry, man. All right. I've come out of that. You know, I've come out of that. The biggest fucking lesson that I learned in that weekend of ceremonies just recently was all about relationships and how it, it is literally an act of service for us to speak our truth. And when there is tension in a relationship and something that really doesn't make us feel good, we need to fucking speak it and address it there and then. Mm -hmm. From our place of center and our place of power. And if the other person can deal with that, then you've spoken your truth and you've done it from your center. But you know, if they can't deal with it, then it's not your problem, it's their problem. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's the biggest lesson I've learned. And guess what, man? Like just this morning, just this morning, I opened an email from a friend who, an old friend who I decided to address things with, and she's basically just ending the relationship. You know? It's just like, yeah, 
and work. <laughs> and so even when you talk about relationships with that, you're not even just talking about like boyfriend, girlfriend, you're talking about like any relationship that you have in your life. You need to say and speak and like how it is and stuff like that. And that, aye, it's just, that's fascinating, man. Mm. So see the sick, the sickness, is that, was that like, is that like just an emotional release? Is that like the sickness was emotion that you had to get rid of I out of your I, body? I could feel, I mean, there was so much meat to be on. It, it literally must have went on for about, and I know it doesn't sound that long, but like it must have gone on for about 10 minutes, like just non-stop. That's a long time to just be vomiting and do no, nothing. Like, a long it, time to be going to the toilet for and a long time to be getting, like, to be sick. It's like, where's all that fluid coming from? You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, energy, man. Energy, yeah. Man. Energy. So I just, I knew, like, to answer your question, I knew that I was releasing, releasing just all the energy that doesn't serve me anymore, man. Like, like, a, like, a, like a snake shedding its skin. That's, that's the purpose of ayahuasca. It helps us shed our skin. And, and, I, and I knew as I, like, I'm fucking head in a bucket, like, ugh. and going through me was this notion of what my ancestors have passed down to me that is toxic, I'm now releasing it right. into this bucket. Like, take it back. I'm sending it back with all of this moment, you know, all the, all the toxic shit, all the, you know, all the fucking toxic masculinity, all the family fucking, all the shit that we live with, right, that we face, it stops with us, man. It stops with us. We're here to turn it all around. That's all right. Do you have children? Three, well, two. I'll soon to be three. Yeah, so. In November. Oh, nice. Yeah. Congrats. Uh, in November, two. too. <laughs> so I have two now, I right? Ollie, uh, eight boy, and Ray, daughter. Right, okay. Uh, so, I mean, as a dad, you know, it's, it's your mission to bring your kids up in a way that you know, doesn't allow the toxicity of your parents and your grandparents doesn't to carry mean, forward. Right? Yeah. And it doesn't mean that they're all toxic wankers, right? Something it just means that you have toxicity, all. yeah. Of yeah. course. Of course. And there, there's you know, they're not arseholes, wankers or whatever, but they have toxicity, you know? And we don't want that toxicity mm -hmm. for our kids. You know? And so we can send it all back to them. Just give it to them and release it. You know, and um, that's what I was all about. Like, I just I sh spat it all into that bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost becoming like aware of like negative patterns and stuff within you that you don't want to then pass on to like your own like offspring type thing. So you, that, that's like a massive thing to like self awareness, eh? Like realizing what negative traits are in yourself or that type of thing, eh? It's like. We've had a wee bit about that type of thing before, eh? and it's just like, it like, fascinates me, like, that, mm. that whole thing about, aye, and it's like, and as you say, I'm glad you said that, that like, because your mum and dad, passing these things on, were only doing the best from what, like, they knew as well. Everybody's so, doing their best. Aye, yeah. I know, it's like, it's funny how just stuff can get passed on and that as well, eh, it's like, yeah. it's mental, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm not the finished article by any means. I mm. still, I still have, I still have some, you know, I'm still claiming some negative attachment bonds mm. to my mom. I'm like that, in fact, you know, like that approval, you know, like that you didn't get as a child. Like, I've still got a bit of that. Still got a bit of that. Still got certain attachments to my mom. You know, like you just feel them coming up. But okay. this is the thing. This is the thing that you know, working with these plant medicines just makes you so much more aware of it. Mm. So when it comes up, you're like, okay, this is this part of you know? And see if you don't have the tools there and then in that moment to turn it around. You can always go to the plants. You can always go to the plants and ask them. They'll teach you. Mm. I promise you that, man. I promise you that they will teach you. You think these, this would be something that, and this was just something that sprung to mind to say there, you think this would be something that men in this given day and age we'd find stuff like that like hard to admit stuff like what you just said them attachments to like parents and and stuff like that I, I, I know personally speaking that would be probably something that i'd find quite hard to to speak about but i think like do you think women would possibly find it easier to or do you think like men would, i don't know what like what do you think yeah i think uh in terms of 
I don't see myself as the stereotypical man, if I'm honest. Aye. I'm quite open the, the way that I quite the way I speak about things and um, I don't really want to stereotype men in general. Aye. But there is still you mentioned masculinity there, there is still that grip of holding on for that manpower as such in terms of earth I feel. Whereas Mother Nature and they see the divine feminine at the moment mm. really strong and standing in the power. I feel that there's there is a divide there in terms of the man having to realise that and for in order for us all to move forward in my eyes, the man does have to kinda of get more in touch with the feminine side and become more balanced with themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's just my opinion and in terms of where we're moving forward, I've had to let go and a lot of what you're saying a lot of these awarenesses things obviously you've had in plants have just felt that I've had a lot of this stuff happening to me and awareness of looking at myself mm. and not really being happy with a lot of stuff that's maybe happened in my life but also the decisions that I've made off the back of stuff mm. as well mm -hmm. so it's looking at that and trying to improve pr pretty much what you're saying there it's like it's your own personal improvement really and it's kind of the journey yeah right. absolutely Absolutely well said, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, nobody gives us a manual. <laughs> there, there is no manual for living, you know. Um, these are all kind of intangible qualities that we develop as we, as we go through life, right? And this is why, actually, this is touching on something really important to me. Um, you know, next year I'm going to be doing a master's in anthropology. Right? Yes. Um, to, to be honest, but, see when you told me that, I was like, I just fucking spits. When you told me that, that you were doing that, I was like, I, I just couldn't think of a better thing for you to do, like a master's in anthropology. I was just like, it, it, it just suits, Ken, it just it suits you like that. It just does, man. Because I remember, like, when I studied, I took a, I actually took a, like, kind of, when you do a degree, you, you get your main block and you can choose other subjects. Mm. I remember taking, I was like, what's this social anthropology? And, like, I went and took it and I was, like, fascinated by it, man. It was so just what like, is it? I don't know what you know. I, I, I just remember this lecture, this Greek lecture at Edinburgh University. Uh, and I, 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 the, the, my mate at uni, Carrie Ann, she just used to, like, fa like she used to fancy him wrong because he could just, like, talk. And, but he, he just had this story about how he, like, for his thesis, he went... Somewhere in South America, I think it was like Costa Rica or something, and they practically like, didn't believe that like people died and they, they, oh, it was just it was fucking fine. What it was just, his name? Theo. Theodorus. Oh, I can't even mind. Honestly, he, he just he was just honestly. I, I sat and just listened to him because he was just like it, I didn't even care what he said, but he just the way he spoke about it, it was just like so passionate and that, and he was going on about these tribes. I think it was Costa Rica. It might have been somewhere else. And just mm. about the local custom, like mm. it's just the anthropology. That's it's like local custom and really Im immersing into like just different tribes and people around the world and how their practices are just so different from us in the West and stuff. Yeah, and it's like but we can we can learn a lot oh, from them, you know. Big time, man. When it comes to connecting with these, when it comes to connecting with nature, our relationship to the world, right? Anthropo means human, so. The ology, humanology, right? Like the the, the 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 science of or the the study of human culture. But the difference between ethnography, because ethno is also of culture of people. The difference between, or as far as I see, anyway, the difference between ethnography and anthropology. Ethnography is a kind of structured study of. And, and, and laying out of the culture as it is, Aye. whereas anthropology is that with a view to what we can learn from them to adapt it to our modern existence, right? Aye. So it's like looking at the potential that these cultures hold for us, right? Um, but I, uh, on that, what I was saying is something that is missing for us. Right, and I think I will probably go into this in my, you know, anthropology masters. Man, is rites of passage. Oh, um, man. oh man, fascinating! It's a big one. It's a big one. You know? For it, for any age, any person. Yeah, everybody, even if even if even if 40, 50 year old. Man, no. what is a rite of passage? It is the passing from one stage or era 
or epoch of life into another mm. in a conscious declared way whether that declaration be voiced reading from a book or or your own writing or or whether it be through a physical act mm. um, and there are so many fucking rites of passage a big one is the vision quest in the north american traditions actually in south america as well they do vision quests but you're essentially not eating not drinking anything for four days going out into nature essentially almost naked and just sitting in nature asking for insight yeah facing all your fears that's that's to take people from teenage years to adulthood you know, they become men become men by by, by doing this right? uh, you know, communing with nature um, and facing all the fears imagine just going like literally <coughs> almost naked in the middle of nature with no food no drink uh, you just like four days yeah yeah and just asking for insight connection right for, you know get eaten by a bear or you know you're like what's that moment over there right. Right. Fuck. Right. all of that stuff facing all those fears and cultivating that relationship with with whatever you believe it is the world the spirit the universe to just cultivate that fucking rock solid faith that you are family right. Um, that was, uh, it was going back to uh, masculinity, yeah. like, we are all, you know, in this society, we, we don't have that, we don't have those reference points, you know, we don't have those, like, those um, definitions in our culture, you know, which is why so many of us are lost, literally fucking lost, and we're still, I mean, oh, and you know what, my dad might watch this, might not, I don't know, but, <coughs> my dad's a, a great example, fucking fantastic example actually, perfect, inch perfect, he's like 73 year old, but he's just never him and his group of mates, they still meet, at the, it's still their culture to just meet together, guzzle pints of lager, go on group holidays together, like fly to wherever in Spain, and just take their culture from here to there and do the same over there as what they do over here, just in a different country. Mm. Right? Get plastered, like they're, they're 60, 70 year old, and get wee silly tattoos on their earlobes or, you know, what's their drum. <laughs> right? I mean, this is, this is like, it's boy culture. It's boy culture, you know? And, I mean, yeah. There is, it's rife here as well, right? We're, right, still, we're, still, we're still doing all that. Silly stuff. We're still, um, like we're still getting into fights because we're induced with alcohol, and you know, like I sometimes see I, 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 on YouTube I watch uh, fight science. I, I like to follow that channel just because I like to stay aware of you know the dynamics of martial arts and stuff. And I just, I, I, I just the amount of like total ludicrous fucking street fights outside. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's just because these people are lost. They have not got a fucking Scooby Doo who they are. What they're all about, you know, like they think that that makes them a man. That doesn't make you a man. Fucking creating tomorrow's world mm. makes you a man. Creating tomorrow's world in a balanced way so that the next seven generations, your fucking great grandchildren, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, your great 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 for, for seven generations down the line, ensuring that the earth is in, in good shape for them. Mm. That's been a man. It's amazing how, like, you mentioning that Rite of Passage and all that, it's amazing how a lot of them involve, like, like nature and that as well, and it's almost like a complete switch off from, like, modern day, like, mm -hmm. switch everything off and just get out there and just, like, and just be, but I think sometimes you, you struggle sometimes to stay quiet, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you've got your phone as a constant companion as well, eh? and, and you're just... Constant information, eh? Mm -hmm. Like constant bombarding, you know, bombarding ourselves with, with, with information. Right, um, and that just shows you as well that like this is a very, it's a very like cliche thing to say. We're being taken so far away from our nature. Like, let's actually put a fucking definition on that, like to bring it a bit closer to home. Right, to, like help us ourselves actually, because you hear all the time, oh, we're moving so far away from our nature. Like, our nature is nature. 
Our nature is having a relationship with the plants. Our nature is communing with nature, with, with the natural world, with mm. the animals, with the plants, right? And we're, we're at that in itself, connecting with plants, having our hands in the earth, planting plants, working with plants, working with nature, it is fact that it makes us more human, as in it motivates us to live in community, right? And to nurture strong community bonds, right? That is our nature. We are made to live on the land, from the land, with the land, through the land, from the land we come, to the land we return, right? It's, that is our nature. And this, like, concrete jungle that we've created for ourselves with a little isolated mother, father, children, mm. households that are fucking separated by walls and the person on the other side of the wall doesn't even know who you are. That is so far from our nature. I know. You know? I know, it's, it's, it, it, it's crazy like how far, uh, how far, how far we've came and it's almost just like, it's just normal now that, eh? it's just like normal. Yeah, but you know, like, I mean, I kind of compare, and, and, and I don't know why this happens to me, but I, I, it, it comes, it's just like an, an understanding and a point of reference that I have, but see killer whales? Right. Like, see how they're kept in captivity and they, I mean, they scrape, their teeth on each other and know each other's fins off and everything, right. right? Like they're totally bonkers. They're just not in a healthy state. But there's so many arguments for keeping them in cap captivity, <coughs> you know, breeding them, like keeping the lineage alive and protecting them because they wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't survive it in the wild because they've grown for a couple of generations in captivity and all this shit, right? Which actually is bullshit. <laughs> right. It is bullshit. It's, it's the same. One. Is it keep them? Yeah, yeah. And you see blackfish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 seen it. yeah. yeah really, really good. Actually, made me really aware of the treatment that they're going through, and mm. it's not normal for them to try to attack humans and kill humans uh, and stuff. Yeah, they were doing that, and yet they were still allowing the whale to mm -hmm. kill people and do shows and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. On Netflix, but yeah. In fact, I don't even know if it's on Netflix. I think it's. But I think it is, yeah, that Blackfish. Yeah. yeah. Or Amazon. Amazon, Amazon I think, yeah. aye. Um, but we're, we're, we're the same. We're the exact same as that. There is no difference. We have, we have fucking built our own prison around us. And then we have this crutch, this fucking mangled walking stick to lean on that's called a GP, right? Who will just dish out fucking drug after drug after drug which sends you further and further and further down the fucking rabbit hole of ill health and toxic existence right. you know and and we because we are powerless without being connected to our source to our nature we are powerless so we give our power to the gp we are in a culture of illness here and who's got the power in his hand the gp oh the doctor says this so i've got to do this oh that's what the doctor says oh well he's got the answers mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, like, that, that's like yeah. a, a historical thing as well. I think it's like if you go back to your mum and dad's era and all that, that was just the dumb thing and all that as well, eh? And it's like, it's how many, so what you, ideally you're saying is we, like, we need to go within, eh? We always, always, always to solve anything in our world, we always need to go within. Answers are right in them, but Aye. at the same time, connecting with nature on the outside helps us to go within. Aye. You know? There is something about like, yeah. like again, water, trees, being like walking in paths and stuff that is just fucking. I like walking when it's raining. Ken. Scientifically proven to just rewire, reset your system. Aye. You know, you spend all day on the computer. Ali, Ali, Ali mentioned this, mentioned this, you know, because obviously running a business that you run, you know, Ali? Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the course now. Hey, Daniel's doing the course uh, now. Daniel's yeah, 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 doing the course yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's module, cool, man. module one stuff, so just right, again, okay. just August intake right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, cool, that's cool. But Ali says that, right? He spends a lot of time on the computer, and, and I, I get this as well, because I spend a lot of time on the computer lately. I'm all day, like, just locked in that computer. 
I feel tense, I Aye. feel neurotic, like my mind is just going, I can't settle, I can't relax. Aye. And if I just go and put my bare feet on the grass for 10 minutes, everything just resets. Aye. You know? And it, it's scientifically proven. It just balances our nervous system. So these people that are working in, out in the countryside with their hands in, their, in the earth all day, just have a look at you know, have a look at their lives and their capacity to be present, make decisions in a balanced way, in an empowered way. I'm not saying everybody out there are working on farms is the kind of example of a human being, right? Oh, but, you're right, but, there is a balanced way with farmers and stuff. There is that calmness about them. Calm, with like quite a clear overview of things. They're not erratic, they don't like go, you know, and like make decisions, snap decisions like that. and fuck things up. You play the long game, don't you? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Mm. Take solid, well-founded decisions, you know? In general, in general, yeah. generalizing. Obviously, there are fucked up farms as well. And, <laughs> of course, of course, right? Because we come from this world, and, and well, there's, I mean, agriculture in itself is the domestication of nature, right? Which, um, in a way, that, that's a whole debatable thing as well. But. <laughs> well, man, man, well, we'll get up, we'll, we'll get a part two, okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> tackle agriculture and hunter gatherer. What, what's your, so what, like, what, what's your plans now then? Like, what, what, like, what are you, where, where do you see yourself going? Mm. I, in, in three or four years, I reckon I'm going to be a doctor of ethnobotany or anthropology. Probably ethnobotany. Why ethnobotany? Because the core thing that moves me with anybody that crosses my path, anybody that comes into an ayahuasca ceremony with me, anybody that comes into contact with me, the core fucking thing that I'm talking and that I want people to understand is how to connect with the spirit of plants. So if I think forward, I know that I'm going to be a doctor in three or four years. That's for sure. Mark, mark my words. <laughs> in, 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 I'll be a, I'll obviously have a master's degree in two years. In three years, I'll probably have a doctorate, if not maximum four years. So in three to four years, I will be a doctor of either anthropology or ethnobotany, but I am thinking it's going to be ethnobotany. Botany meaning plants, ethno meaning people, so the relationship between people and plants, ethnobotany. Right? I think that's, that's where I'm going to go. But, Sounds fascinating, man. But, but why? What is it that I'm... So in the background here, I'm, I'm building an, an academy. It's called the Jungle Wisdom Academy. Uh, the doorway for everybody is language. So I'm teaching people Spanish, right? I, of course, you know, I have the capacity to do that. I speak it perfectly. In fact, everybody in the Spanish-speaking world does not believe me that I'm not a native Spanish speaker. Oh, really? Yeah. Not one person thinks I'm... Because my Spanish... You know, without blowing my own trumpet or whatever, but my Spanish is, is perfect. Accent, pronunciation, everything. Like, completely bilingual. Me yeah. um, So, that's the doorway, Spanish language. That opens then to the possibility of learning the indigenous languages, such as Shipibo, right? Which is the language that I'm working with. And as things develop, I'll then open up to Portuguese, because I also speak fluent Portuguese, not as perfect as in Spanish, but very fluent. And then I'll open people, I'll open the doorway to the indigenous tribes of the Brazilian Gawanawa, Kashinawa, Apurina, Honey Queen, and the one that's shared between Peru and Brazil, which is the Ashanka. And those are all speakers of the Pano languages. So I'll probably keep it within the Pano languages. But what that does is opens one doorway to another doorway to the final doorway, which is a deep connection with those indigenous tribes of the Amazon that brings them by default a deep connection with the plants yeah to revive this connection that we have intrinsically inside of us with the plants of the world my I guess you could say that my mission is to um, is to one primarily well there's no one that's above the other they all go hand in hand right so um, to help people to fucking radically heal their lives with the use of ayahuasca and other plant medicines and just to be with them through that process. It, honestly, it is the most heartfelt, beautiful experience I've ever had in my life to watch people turn their lives upside down like in the most amazing way possible. It's 
so work. I just love it. I love it. And you, 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 uh, you both know what I'm talking about. Because uh, we're coaches, right? Uh, so, um, it's like it's just profoundly satisfying. In doing that, <coughs> in doing in doing so, the next so that's one thing. The next thing is to bring a level of recognition, validation, and reverence to the world's indigenous populations and their wisdom for the world, which of course by default includes relationship with plants mm. and moreover psychedelic plants. And so the third one that ties into both of those is to in our modern world live legitimize and legalize psychedelic therapy modalities. That's what I want to do. That's why I'm here on earth now. Mm -hmm. That could be a tricky one as well. Like expansion of right. in that but human race have to be ready for it. We can slowly just the modern world needs to be ready for it, right? And the big corporates need to be ready for it. And big pharma needs to be ready for it because psychedelics equals freedom. And profit is made from our imprisonment. Mm. When we are imprisoned, profits are made. When we are free, we are our own profits. Big pharma, man. I mean, Dave, reading some stuff about that at, at uni and doing a couple of essays in that, man, I was just like, oh, man, this is just like, how these companies get away with some shit in that, man? It's just like... <laughs> Like you say, that's, that's the, where the money is. Mm, absolutely. And it's, it comes with expense of us, and I think mm. most people really know that deep down, but like you say, we like to mm. blank it out and mm. not forget or mm. not, not forget, not bring it into our awareness. Really. Yeah. Just remember the Swim GP, what would you like, like, again, people, like, people watching this, like, what, how, how, what, how, what would you say to them as, like, words of wisdom, inspiration, or if somebody's going through like a, a bit like a bad time now, or like, and again, what, like, what, what would you say to them? Probably that nature is alive, and that <clears throat> every single piece of nature, all the plants, all the trees, all the grass, every piece of nature, the sea, it is made from its very core of unconditional love. And every single piece of nature wants every other piece of nature to thrive and to prosper and to be fucking beautiful. Mm. And we are an integral part of nature. So when we're feeling down, remember that and go and talk to nature. Just go and talk to nature. Just go and be in nature, sit under a tree. Take a kipper from going the river. <laughs> whatever, whatever floats your boat, you know, whatever, however you wish to, to connect with nature. Walk with your bare feet in the sea, mm. along the beach. But don't just do it whilst being, whilst processing all your thoughts and whatever. Do it with intent. Mm. Do it knowing what I've just said that everything has consciousness and is made of unconditional love. And so communicate with it. What, what, what's the grass say to you? Mm. So you're actually going in with an intention when you're going into nature and be like, if you've got like a question on your mind, you're like, right, can you give me an answer or yeah. can you show me the way or that type of thing? Yeah. Or simple, just simple gratitude. Simple gratitude and see what comes through. One thing that we can be grateful to all the plants for. Aye. Oxygen. Aye, exactly. Start right there. Aye. If you've lost everything else, start with your breath. Right. Grateful to the for that. Right. Big time, like it's I something that I think we like we, we forget sometimes as well. Like we have like especially in the modern world as well, especially what's going on now with COVID <laughs> as well. Like, you think that like, we have got so many things to be grateful for in that as well. Like, we've got so many things to be grateful for, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's like, this conversation is one of those things. Oh, <laughs> it's quite funny though how you went you went through so many like different like you're obviously very knowledgeable with the stuff that you've learned. You talk about past life regression, you talk about pods, you know, like people that yeah. I think it's quite interesting that you've went right you've went right to the plant, you've went right to source, it's like you've you've went further than most people go. Mm. Mm. Man, we haven't we, we haven't even explored my entrepreneurial path and you know, like 
what happened when I was a developer, as a later writer, content creator, and building multiple companies, eh? like that period for me was a dark night of the soul that brought me right back to this. How long was that period, Mark? Four. Six years. Six years. Five, six years. Dark Nights of the Soul are something that fascinate me, like mm. something that like really, really fascinate me. Like they're just like it's almost like they're essential mm. to growth. Yeah, just you can't, like, you can't have to the dark. You can't. I, mean, I can't. I think it was a post on Facebook I seen for you once, and you were like, "Growth equals." Like it, like the tightest, putting up the biggest, tightest condoms up over your body and like struggling to get out of it or something. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're doing That's what we're doing with you. That's what we're doing with you. You have your fucking skulls <laughs> washed in. I've never seen it like that. I was like, oh my god, that is like so true. Man. Like, you're just like, you're just like, oh fuck, not fighting with yourself. You're just like, oh no, fucking please show me the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh man, I dark nights and so I've got a book here. Oh, it's a fucking bible of mine, Thomas Muir. Dark nights and so it's just like. Mm. It goes on about like rites of passage and just fucking things happening in your life that fucking affect you and oh, it's just like so eat like so see when when like people are down in it, I'm always like I feel that there's like a purpose to it. Do you know what I mean? People are going through like a right tough time if something bad's happened in their life and there's always like a some underlying purpose, but I don't know if everybody recognizes it mm, in time. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Aye. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean you you know what I went through earlier this year. That was the first time in my entire life. That was my the first time in my entire life that I had even entertained the thought of suicide. And that was this year. Earlier this year. Really? Just just a couple of months ago. Um, and there are moments well when you get that deep into the darkness. Aye. It can be difficult to, it can be difficult to find solace in that notion Aye. that the dark nights of the soul are, you know, uh, they have a purpose. Um, but once you're through there, well, in fact, that just being reminded of that can really, really help, man. You know, can really help. Um, yeah. Um, but this is the path that, that we lead, man. You know, I, I, I speak to my, like my maestro. Every person who chooses the path of shamanism, you know, they have to go a bit fucking scat and a bit bonkers at the one point and, you know, depending on who you're working with, where you're working, what plants you're working with or whatever, like, those, that can come round, like, at any time, you know, they're, they're, they're just energies, right, they're just energies and that's, yeah, that came, that came, that came my way, just, Two months ago, three months ago. And how did you did, did you get to a certain point where you were kind of like, right, I, I feel that I'm moving past that? Oh, oh right. absolutely, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but what, you know, when you're, when you're in there, it's like, it's difficult to see that way out. It's mm. difficult to see, you know, it's really difficult to see. Oh, you had the ceremonies. Is it the ceremony this year? You just had a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, but then I had one in, I had one in June, and it was off the back end of doing that ceremony in June that I went. Whoa, to a really really dark place um, but all for the purpose of discovery and healing right yeah and and there's no coincidence that this one just two weeks ago was the biggest release of my entire life because being down there processed it all now come back up <laughs> fucking get rid of it all right you know and yeah so that's exactly like and of course because i'm I'm fully ready to facilitate now, you know, like hold my own ceremonies and, and whatever. Um, of course, for the public, for for the for, for the purposes of pub, the public eye, I will only be doing that in Peru, <laughs> where, where it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, do my own ceremonies and that. Oh, amazing, man! What a journey so far, eh? Mm. What a journey no. so far, man! It's like. Fucking, it's just, fucking, I, I, it's just like, I, it's, I, I, I'm just like, ever since I met you, I've just been like fascinated by you, man. I just think it's 
the journey's just been fucking incredible, man. Mm. It's like, and still like so long, like there's a long way to go as well. As Ken, it's like mm. you've achieved so much as well in such a short space of time, eh? It's like mm. I've never even got into the the corporate and all that as well, eh? Yeah. And all that, like, fucking hell, man. Episode two to come. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, are you staying here? Are you going to keep staying here then? Until May or June next year that I move to Kent to start my Masters in September. But right. when I do my Masters and when I do the Doctor, I'm going to be back and forth to and from the Amazon jungle. Right, okay. I need to go and plug into AWAT. And, you know, and right. Plug in and be with my maestro, work with the plants and whatever. But yeah, I'll be here until May, June. So fucking fascinating. Oh. It's just fascinating. <laughs> I think I uh, was in jungle on its own, like you've got a good relationship there, but just thinking about that, hey. Eh? Maybe we could get a, like a maybe we could get like an all area. Out of like, the Amazon jungle. Follows MGB yeah. into the Amazon man. That would be, be like a documentary well, man. Yeah. Documentary. Why not? Part part of what I'm gonna be doing anyway, like is 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 documenting, film documenting what I'm doing for the purposes of anthropological study and whatever else. Right? Yeah. I need some guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you know what you're signing up for? <laughs> <laughs> Keep the conversation going, guys. Yeah, you, know, like, uh, you never know. Ah, uh, exactly, man. It's like, well, like I, I could like carry I could fucking just keep on talking to be honest, like so. <laughs> we have got a year because yeah. otherwise I'll just fucking I'll just I'll just play the wrong like I can sit here and take a photo tonight yeah. I, I could like I love good chat man I love good deep chat thanks so much man. for coming on mate thanks so much and uh, yeah we'll get a second part oh MGB man it's been a fucking absolute pleasure mate absolute yes, fucking pleasure <laughs> <laughs> all areas podcast another Friday session done again just to remind you ever seen anybody look so cool in a pair of yellow jeans <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous man. Right, have a nice weekend folks and we shall see you next week. Have a good weekend guys. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Oh and just a Good final morning. one oh. as well. Um, just wanted the the all areas guys, we just want to pay respects to Eva Arnett, who obviously a girl from me who passed away last week through cancer and her journey if anybody knew her and how positive she was right up to the end was was so inspiring. And I just wanted a wee special mention for her and Heart goes out to anybody who's been really affected by that. So, cheers, guys. Yes, indeed.